Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord's been dealing with me about a subject, amen, this week, and, and I'm going to scratch the surface of it just for a few minutes, amen, in John chapter 4, and, uh, and I, I feel like it goes right along with what I've been speaking, and uh, I won't, uh, I'll try my best not to keep us too long, amen, because I did take a bit of my time in worship, and I, I thank you for worshiping God. Amen. I am speaking today from the from First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 29, and the book of John chapter number 4 and uh, verse number 21. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29, and John chapter 4 and verse number uh, 21. We'll start with First Chronicles 16. It's a, a uh, it's a very familiar passage of scripture and it's latched in the midst of a bunch and we could spend all night just dealing with just dealing with that chapter It's a phenomenal chapter but in verse number 29 it said given to the Lord the glory do his name do unto his name bring an offering and come before him worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness worship the Lord in the beauty of of holiness amen in John chapter 4 and uh, and verse number 21 Jesus saith unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father you worship you know not what we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. By the help of the Lord, I'm going to speak on this subject for just a few minutes. The beauty of worship. The beauty of worship. Let's worship the Lord for just a moment together. I love you, Jesus. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for what we've already felt. But I pray, O oh God, that there would be something that would fall upon this place. Hallelujah. Let a fresh spirit of worship fall upon us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I honor you. I give you glory. I praise your name, O oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. And uh, so you may be seated. I'd like to, uh, just for a few minutes, give reference to uh, the times in the Old Testament that the word worship was used as individuals worship. Amen. God. The first time that we, that we find, and I'm going to run through these real quick, and, uh, and because I feel like uh, that, that we can get to the meat. You guys know the stories, and so we don't have to, we're going to try to cut to the chase as much as possible. Uh, but the first, the first one was whenever Abraham took Isaac, his son, and headed to the top of the mount. And as, they, as, they, uh, as, as he saw the mount ahead of him, he turned to his servant, and he said to him, he said to his servants, the lad and I, will go to the mount. This is in Genesis chapter 22, verses 4 through 6. He said, the lad and I will go to the top of the mount to worship, and we will return. Amen. And, uh, and so he had in his mind, amen, something, though he already knew that God had planned, amen, God had said, I want you to take your son and offer him on the altar as a sacrifice, he didn't know how God was going to do it, but he knew that there had to be a miracle somewhere because God had already promised him that Isaac, the seed of Isaac, would be where 
his grandchildren and great-grandchildren and his nation was going to come from. He already had the promise that Isaac was the son of promise. And so whenever he had this as a promise, he said, I don't see a man in, the, in, in his own mind. He did not see how God was going to perform the work. All he knew in his mind is I'm getting ready to see a miracle. I don't know how the miracle's going to come, and I don't know exactly the timing of the miracle, but I know that today, amen, whenever I begin to worship, amen, as my son and I head up the mountain to worship, amen, it's in my mind, not just to praise, but I've gone up the mountain to worship, and as I get up to the top of the mountain, there will be something miraculous that happens at the top of this mountain. I don't know what it will be, but I know that in my worship, there's going to be something that God's going to do for me. And I'm going to worship with expectation, believing that God, oh hallelujah, amen. He, he might have given me some bad news, but I know the end of the bad news, amen, is just about that sentence hasn't closed yet. That paragraph hasn't closed yet. I'm getting ready to see a miracle. And by the end of the story, amen, of worship, amen, Abraham and Isaac walk back down, amen, from that mountaintop experience, God had provided a ram at the top of the mountain, amen, and, uh, and that sacrifice that was supposed to be Isaac, amen, all of a sudden God said, take the ram and use him instead, amen, and there was a miracle that happened, amen, when they went to worship, amen. Just two chapters later, the next mention of worship is found in chapter number 24 and verse number 48. And Abraham's servant had been sent by Abraham to get a bride for Isaac. Amen. And when he got, amen, the servant got to the home or to the city or town, amen, where the bride for Isaac was, amen, the servant prayed and said, God, I know that you're the God of Abraham, but I need a miracle from you. I need you to lead me to the right lady for Isaac to marry. I don't know who she is. Amen. Could you bring her by? And these are the specifics that I'm asking for, for my miracle. And while he was yet praying his prayer, amen, the Bible said that Rebecca came, amen, and he said, could I get a drink of water from you? And uh, everything that he prayed for, he watched as God began to unfold in this woman, amen, or this young lady. Whenever he, when, whenever he saw this, the Bible said that he bowed and he worshipped. Amen. He hadn't taken her home to Isaac as yet. He just knew that the prayer that he had prayed, the answer was already being in process. Amen. And, uh, and though I may not see how it's going to happen, I'm accepting that, amen, that though I don't have the bride for Isaac yet, amen, God has begun to, work, begun to answer. Therefore, my response, amen, to what God is getting ready to do is to worship Hallelujah, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I read in Exodus chapter number 4, amen, when Moses, first time that he saw, amen, the leaders of Israel, and he brought them, amen, before him, and the Bible said that he said, 
This is what God told me while I was in the backside of a desert. God said, he's going to deliver you. And Israel said, amen. They didn't say it out loud, but they began to say, we've been praying for this moment. We've been asking God for this moment. I don't know how God's going to do it, but I accept what God has given me and my acceptance will be found as I worship. And they bowed their head in worship, amen, as God had given them that promise. In chapter number 12, amen, God said to Abraham, he said, you tell them to put the blood on the lintel and upon the doorpost. He said, you tell them to eat their meal, amen, on the inside with their shoes upon their feet, their staff in their hand because tonight is the night of deliverance. When Israel heard, amen, the news, chapter number 12 of Exodus tells us, amen, that when Israel heard that news, they bowed their head and they worshiped. They said, I don't see it yet, but in my mind, I can already see myself walking out of slavery and into a place of freedom. It's not mine, amen, in the in my present, but it is in my future. And because it's in my future, I have chosen to accept what God has given, amen, and say what God has given is mine, and I accept it in worship, in honoring him, and giving him the glory that is due his name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. In Judges chapter number 7, Gideon has gone through his testing time with God. And God has weeded down, amen, an army from, uh, uh, I believe it was 32,000, down to 10,000, and then down to 300 men. They have uh, but pitchers and trumpets and, and lamps to fight their battle. And Gideon had just a little bit of question, amen, still in his mind. And God said, what I want you to do is uh, if you still need an answer, what I want you to do is I want you to go down to the enemy's camp and they will, and what you hear, amen, from the enemy will encourage you. And the Bible said in Judges 7 and verse 15, Amen. And when Gideon, amen, heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshiped, amen, he knew, amen, that nobody knew him in that enemy's camp. But God had put on the enemy's lips, amen, the name of Gideon and had said, Gideon has given this host, or God has given Gideon this host this night. And Gideon said, I don't see it with my natural eye, but I accept the promise of God. And he bowed his head and he worshiped and said, though I may not see it, amen, through what my eyes see, God has given me a promise and I accept the promise by faith and it starts out with worship. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen. And, 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 I, and, and you know, because I, I typed in every time they say worship, or worship, or worships. Amen. And, and this, is, this is the theme that I kept seeing. And so it almost seemed to me, amen, thank you. Amen. It almost seemed to me as I was, as I was reading this, that the next passage seemed to fall out of character. Amen. Because the next passage of Scripture was found in Job chapter number 1. Amen. And verse number 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. 
And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. When he found out that he had lost, amen, all of his wealth, that he had lost everything that was a possession of his, amen, Job said, I still, amen, I, I'm in the trial, and I don't know how I'm going to get out of the trial, but this much I know. The Lord gave, the Lord took away. I don't know the end of the story, but that doesn't take away my responsibility to accept the will of God within my life. I will worship accepting what God has in store for me. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know the one that's got my tomorrow in his hand. I don't know that I'll be sick tomorrow, but today I'll worship. Tomorrow I'll worship. The next day I'll worship because I accept the plan of of God within my life. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That's why he could say later on, though the skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. I can't explain it, he was saying. But he said, I do know this much. The God that I serve, he didn't bring me this far and leave me without a promise. I have the promise, yet my flesh I shall see God. It may seem like everything is against me but I know this much he is alive hallelujah and when he has tried me I shall come forth as gold I know that when he gets done with me I'm going to be a worshiper hallelujah in the midst of the trial because I know that the trial is just the beginning of the miracle that God has for me Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And so, and so, David gives us three instructions in worship given to the Lord in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 29. The glory do his name. So, bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I'm wondering if perhaps we could tie the whole verse to worship. Let's suppose we could. Then he is saying somehow, since you're called by his name, you're a representative, and the way that you respond to the things that are going on around you, give glory to the name of God. Oh, hallelujah. When we begin to respond in a positive light, and when we begin to do the things that, amen, that the world would say, that confuses me. They should be down right now. Yeah, it seems like hey, it's a matter of fact that's what, the, that's what God said to the devil did you consider my servant Job hey I've turned my back on him and done some things and I've allowed you to do some things to him amen that, uh, that, I, that I'm going to reverse in a little while amen but right now have you considered him and the devil said the hedge is still about him I can tell you if you'll break down the hedge amen and you let me at him he'll curse you to your face Amen. And whenever he, whenever he took away his health, amen. And, and Job said, I ain't charging God foolishly. Amen. I'm still going to give him glory and honor. Amen. The devil said, I ain't never seen anybody like this man. Somebody that will worship, amen, in the midst of adversity, that will worship in the midst of every trial that they're facing. They'll continue to say, I accept whatever comes my way as the will of 
of God within my life. I accept whatever, amen, whatever trial that I have and I say God is in control and this trial ain't going to last always. I'm going to have a miracle within my life. I'm going to receive something great from God, amen, in my tomorrow and I'm expecting it, amen, and the way I expect it is through my worship. Hallelujah. So he said, give unto the uh, Lord the glory, do his name. Bring an offering and come before him. And then he said, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. And, and, and I looked up this word worship. One of the definitions is an honor and a reverence. Amen. And, and, and so a form of worship. Amen. A form of it is the bowing of the head. Amen. The kneeling. Amen. But a form of worship. Amen. Is when we live the way that He wants us to live. When we dress the way that He wants us to dress. When we speak the way He wants us to speak. In that realm of holiness. Amen. This world is so filled. Amen. With, with bombs of every every shape and size that we, that should embarrass a sailor. Amen. But the world amen can look at the church and there's a church that is standing and saying amen you may speak that way but I'm worshiping hallelujah in the spirit of holiness. Amen. The world may dress immodest but the church says hallelujah. Amen. I'm not doing this because of rules and restrictions I'm doing this because I want to honor hallelujah I want to give glory unto the God of gods I'm worshiping him in the beauty of holiness oh hallelujah this is a form of my worship amen my obedience to God my submission to God amen my being faithful to the house of God it's all a form of worship and as I worship him I fall under the umbrella of his promise and his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. My, 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 my. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So first form of worship is in the beauty of holiness. Actions, amen, dress, and, and the things that go on around is giving honor to God. And, uh, and when you give honor to Him, amen, you are giving Him the glory that is due His name. Psalms 96, and, or 95 and verse number 6, rather. Psalms chapter 95 and verse number 6 says, O come and let us worship and bow down and let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. So first He said, come and let us bow. And then He said, that's not enough. I've come to kneel and to bow. I've come to drop myself prostrate. I want to honor Him. I want to give Him the glory that is due His name. I've come to worship Him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Of all the people, amen, that, that could have spoke of worship, David could. Because David said, he took me, amen, out of, the, out of the sheepfold. And he placed me in the house of a king. I didn't deserve to be king. But look at where I'm at right now. I come to worship him. Knowing what he's done for me. And knowing what he's going to do for me. Amen. He has already blessed me. Amen. Up to this point. But I see him. Amen. As a, as a God that continues to bless as long as I continue to worship. Oh, hallelujah. In Psalms 132 and verse number 7. And we will go into his tabernacles and we will worship at his footstool. So he said, we're going to go into the house of the Lord. And our purpose in going into the house, of, uh, the house of God or the tabernacle, our whole purpose is to worship. Amen. We're going to worship God. When we come here, we're not coming here. Amen. Just so that they can say on the outside, look, there's one, two, three, four, five cars in the parking lot. Amen. And I'm not coming here to say, oh, good. Now I've got, 
15 in the church instead of 14. No, the reason I'm coming here is because I've come to worship Him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There are so many promises that He has yet for me. And I accept the blessing that will come when I worship Him. Oh, hallelujah. Now, now I'll take us just a little bit farther. Amen. So in the New Testament, amen. In, in, in Matthew chapter 2 and verse number 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, amen, behold there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Amen. You know what they were doing? They were accepting the promise that the Messiah had come just in the form of a babe. And they said, we know what we have to do. We have to accept it by worship. I accept the promise, hallelujah, of a Messiah. And though the world may not accept him, we, hallelujah, the, those wise men said, we have come accepting the plan of God on the earth. Though I may not understand it in its fullness, we have seen a star in the east. And because we've seen, amen, a sign of promise, we are coming to worship at his feet because every time that there's a promise, hallelujah, coming our way it always a man will include worship a man in the promise there will always be worship whenever there's a promise that's getting ready to be fulfilled oh hallelujah there will always be worship a man whenever you begin to see a miracle begin to perform hallelujah there will always be something that causes worship within the light Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter number 8. Matthew chapter 8 and, uh, and verse number 2. And, uh, Matthew 8 and, uh, and verse number 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord... If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Amen. This old boy, he said, I know there's a promise in my future. I may not have seen it. Amen. In any other time, I've been, I've been a leper for so long. And it's an incurable disease. And I know that there's no hope as far as the doctors would say. Nobody is giving me hope. But I'm coming to the one that can give me hope. And the way that I'm going to come today is I'm going to worship you. Because I know that you're the answer to my promise. Oh, hallelujah. And by the end of the story, Jesus had touched that man. And he was no longer leprous. But he was completely made whole. Because when you begin to worship, you can expect that God, hallelujah, will hear your worship. And will watch you. He'll honor what you're doing. And his glory will will come down and it will touch you. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Man, I, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to preach this if I hadn't seen so many scriptures because in, Ma in Mark chapter 5 and verse number 6, a demon-possessed man, a man with a legion of devils, a man, the devils on the inside of this man were tormenting him, causing him to strip his clothes off. But when he saw Jesus afar off, a man with a legion of devils, he understood the power of worship. He understood.
understood. Amen. The devils also understood if he gets too close to Jesus. Amen. We're in trouble. Amen. But the man understood if I can worship him, my, my freedom is going to come. I've been bound for years under the torment of devils. But if I can worship, hallelujah, he's going to set me free. I worship him. Amen. And the devils, amen, had to flee because he worshiped. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Ha. Matthew chapter number five, chapter number nine. While he spake these things unto them, behold, a certain, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. He said, I'm coming with an air of expectation. I'm not coming believing that I'm going to a funeral tomorrow, but I'm coming believing that you are, that you are the resurrection and the life. I'm coming believing that, that you have the power to bring my daughter back. Amen. I know that she's at the point of death. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm believing and accepting the promise of God by faith. I will worship you. Hallelujah. Amen. Expecting to, to receive, amen, this miracle that you have for me. I'm expecting that there is something that's going to happen in my daughter's life. And the end of the story is, amen, that that 12 year old little girl amen had stopped breathing had stopped living and Jesus grabbed a hold of her hand picked her up and spoke life back into her and she was fed amen I believe that the key amen originated when Jarius said I don't care who sees me I don't care what goes on around me I've got to go and worship I need a miracle and the way that I get my miracle is when I worship. Hallelujah. This one, amen, called Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen on the tomorrow if I don't get my miracle. But right now, I've just decided to accept my miracle. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, in Matthew chapter 15. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, thy son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And uh, he answered her not a word. His disciples came and besought him, saying, uh, Send her away, for she crieth unto us, after us. He answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel and then she came and worshipped then she came and worshipped and she said I know where my help comes from it can only come from you I'm going to worship you and he said lady don't you understand it's not meat to give the, cry, the bread to dogs? And she said, yes, Lord, but the dogs get the crumbs that fall for the rich man's table. Don't you see my position? I'm in worship. I'll just take a breadcrumb if that's what it takes. But I'll take that breadcrumb because that breadcrumb is my miracle. And Jesus said, ooh, this faith is great. Somebody has stepped out into faith and they've begun to worship me and in their worship they've unlocked the door to a miracle oh hallelujah while they tarried in, Jesus said go to Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued with power from on high you know what I believe was going on would have been considered a, by us a worship service. A worship service. God, you promised us a, a promise. 
I don't know what it's going to act like. I don't know what it's going to be like. But you said it's a promise that we will receive your spirit. I don't know how it's going to, how it's going to feel. But you gave me a promise. And I'm worshiping you. I'm accepting the promise by faith. I believe, amen, that you're going to fill me with the Holy Ghost. I believe that it's going to happen to me. And so I'm going to worship him. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to worship him. And, and the day one came and, and it went. And they said, you know what? I didn't get it today. But you know what? Just because I didn't, I didn't get it on the first day of my worship, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop worshiping. I'm going to worship until the promise comes. I'm going to keep on worshiping until I see that promise in my own life. I'm going to keep on worshiping until God gives that promise to me. Amen. I might come on a Sunday morning, and it may not come, but I'm going to come back on Sunday night, and I'm going to be there worshiping because one of these services, God's going to give me that promise. Amen. I thank you, God, for your promise. I thank you that you have promised that you're going to fill me with the Holy Ghost. I thank you for what you've already done in my life. I thank you for the way that you filled me with your spirit. I thank you for the way that you forgave me of my sins. I thank you for the way that you washed my sins away. And now, God, I'm thanking you in advance. Hallelujah for the Holy Ghost that you're going to give me. I thank you in advance. Hallelujah for the promise that's coming my way. I don't know exactly what day it's coming, but I thank you in advance for what you're doing, God. I thank you in advance, and I'm I'm just worshiping you because while the world is saying you ain't got it yet, I'm saying I'm accepting it still. Hallelujah. There's a promise that's mine, and I will receive it by my worship. I'm going to worship worship him until that promise is fulfilled within my life. Amen. Everything that God, amen, has spoken into my life. Amen. It may seem like shattered dreams but I'm still going to worship him. I'm still going to give him glory. It may seem like it's never going to turn around but I'm still going to give him the glory. I'm still going to worship because the promise is still mine. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Having a spirit that says, I believe that what God says is true. And I believe the promise of God is for me. And I'm going to accept by faith what God has given. I'm going to worship him in spirit my, my flesh might say I've done this so many times and it has not happened my flesh might say I know amen what I've seen in the past but flesh get out of my way my spirit tells me the promise is mine and I'm going to worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm going to accept the promise that God has for me in spirit and in truth. The beauty of worship. The beauty of worship. Now we did the old songs. I'm getting ready to do one of the new ones. Come on up and help me. I need you. It ain't new, new. You got, you'll know it. You, you taught it to me, so I know you know it. Give me a key to play with. I don't know. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, yeah. Yes. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. A lick at the moment that I see. But the presence of the Lord is here. You know what I do? Whenever I begin to worship, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord. Here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel. 
tasting your first taste of miracle or whether you're tasting the, the worst taste of bitterness that's ever that you've of defeat that you've ever tasted worship will get us to a point that we can again hallelujah expect the miraculous amen it just has a way of doing that it might have seemed like there's no hope for tomorrow but I'm going to worship him tonight I'm going to give him glory tonight. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. I thank you, God, for the promise that you've made. I thank you for what you're, the way that you're operating within our lives. I love you, Lord. I accept the blessing that you are about to put upon my life. I accept the healings that you're getting ready to perform. Hallelujah, within our church. I believe you and thank you in advance for those that that will be filled with the Holy Ghost. I thank you for every backslider that's on their way back. I thank you for every time that the waters are going to be troubled. I thank you in advance, hallelujah, for all that you're going to do within our lives. I thank you for a fresh anointing. I thank you, Lord, for a fresh unction from the Spirit. I thank you for what you're doing tonight. I thank you, God, for your promise. I thank you for renewed revival. I thank you for a revival among the church. I thank you for a revival among the sinners. I thank you for a revival, hallelujah, that will sweep this city. I thank you, God, amen, for everything that you're going to do, amen, that you're going to allow us to be a part of. I worship you, God, hallelujah, I worship you, God. outside. 